Hi, James Gurney here. I want to show you how to make a curved track dolly. This is also called a radius dolly or a circle dolly. And what it does is it lets your camera move in a circular dimension rather than straight on a line. You can use this one to either do shots that take you on time lapse around an object that you want to track, or you can use it for time lapse for stop motion. Or you can do live action shots where you want to track around a subject. This one is can be hand operated. The camera is on a Lego cart. Uh, or you can operate it uh, using a motorized dolly using a Lego powered machine to pull the uh, cart along. And I'll show you how to build that as well. So let's get started. Now a lot of do-it-yourself photo gear projects involve using PVC pipe and this is something regular plumbing pipe that you can get at the hardware store. It's a fairly stiff material so it's okay if you have straight pieces that don't need much bending. But if you want to build something like this which is a camelback dolly designed for taking the camera on a curving uh, dropping kind of move um, or if you're doing something like this, which is a, uh, a circular dolly where the camera is being pulled along, uh, along a curving circular section of track, you need to have a more flexible um, material. And that's what this is. This is uh, PEX tubing. It's really waterline tubing. Uh, and it's much more flexible than regular PVC pipe. And so this is only about uh, three, four, five dollars for a 10 foot long piece and so you only need one long piece to make a uh, curving track dolly. Now I built my curved track dollies in two different radiuses. This one has a radius of about five feet so this gives a much more gradual curve and allows the camera to be farther away from the subject if you want to keep it in frame. This one has a 21 inch radius and that allows the camera to be a little closer to the subject uh, while it tracks around a circle. So to figure out how to draw that arc, I make a giant T on the floor. The long bar is the radius, and it's not five feet, but six feet. Then using another board, held in position loosely with a nail through a hole, I draw the arc and mark it as six feet to the inner one. And then use a portable jigsaw to cut the wood. This isn't just a single board. I, I used um, a couple pieces of board and glued them together to make a rough arc. Now I have a piece of pine that's a one by three. It's actually three quarter by two and a half inches. And I'm using a five eighth inch spade bit to drill two holes, three and three eighths inches apart. That spacing seems to work best for the Lego carts that I'll be using later. So these end pieces will both hold the PEX pipe but also attach the base plates for the pulling devices. And they're cut out so that the string is down at the level of the base of the track. So here they are sanded, ready to go. This tubing is, says it's one half inch but the outer dimension is actually five eighths. Now this is the smaller of the two uh, curved tracks. This is the 21 incher. And I'm building this a different way. The bed of the track is a piece of quarter inch plywood rather than the one inch board. And I'm holding it in with a couple of screws going to an intermediate piece of wood below the end of it. And that holds it to the end piece. And the platform for the motor goes below the level of the track so that the output of the string will be around the level of the track itself. I have a platform on each end of this unit so that I can pull it in either direction. The PEX tubing is held in with screws from the underside and spaced every four or five inches. 
I put some screws that go right up into the PEX material and that holds the curvature in place. Now I'm using the three quarter inch uh, spade bit to create a mounting place for the uh, T-nut. This is a brad pointed T-nut and this will be the mounting place for the um, tripod. So the quick release plate from my Velbon tripod attaches to the quarter 20 screws of that mounting plate. You can also make one out of wood. I've done that a few times here. Um, and that way you don't need to find a separate mounting plate every time. Now in between the two pieces of PEX pipe on the top side of this is a piece of tileboard trim. It's fiberglass reinforced plastic and it has a bottom plate that uh, is flush to the surface that you can hold down with screws. And the purpose for this piece of trim is as a guide for the string from the Lego motor so that it doesn't look pull across an arc of the circumference. Now one thing I want to point out as kind of a caution about this type of, of curve track dolly is that the camera is not secure on top of this cart. Uh, it could get bumped off and fall to the ground. So if there's any possibility of that, it's, I would suggest only using it on a tabletop rather than above some hard floor or surface. So you can either build a tether to catch it if it falls uh, or put pillows below it, but the main thing is just uh, don't blame me if you have a problem with your camera. Uh, just do it if you're really sure the camera is going to stay safely on top of the track. The other thing is if you use the motor to pull it to the end, you have to be ready to stop the motor or else it'll keep pulling on the string when the camera gets to the end of its run. So with those two cautions in mind, I've used this many, many times and have never had a problem with it. Now let's talk about the little cart that the camera runs on. You'll notice that it's got a little angle to the axles of the wheels so that it'll take the turn. The wheels are regular uh, Lego wheels with the rubber tires removed. And to figure out this angle piece for the chassis of the cart, I mark off a 10 degree angle because that's about how much I want it to turn. And then I've drilled some holes in this. This is three eighths of an inch thick and about four inches long. And about an inch and a quarter across. Now this will have the Lego pieces screwed onto the sides of it. Here's, let's take a look at the pieces. This is what you'll need. These are the wheels with the rubber tires removed. And that's a mini ball head camera mount and a quarter 20 thumb screw. These little spacer pieces fit onto the axles which are about three and a half inches long. And all these other parts come from Lego Technique sets. These are assembled from a bunch of different sets that we had. But you'll need these sizes of pieces. And these screws go through the holes in the Technique's pieces uh, to hold the whole thing together against the angled wood base. Okay, so let's uh, watch the build here and sped up a little bit so you can see how it works. The screws hold those in, and then I put the top pieces, and then the axles, and then it's ready to go. Now, of course, one issue with this system is the noise level. You can shield it with some foam rubber uh, or just keep the microphone far away from it. Now, the key to gearing down a high-speed motor so that it turns very slowly is to go from a small gear to a big gear. And then on that axle, small to big, small to big, uh, a number of times. The more often you go from small to big, the more you'll slow down that motor and make a more gradual pull on the string. This is my slowest time-lapse motor. It goes about 
one inch every 70 seconds or one foot every 15 minutes. And here's another one that goes two feet in eight seconds. It's a lot faster because it has fewer gear downs. So I make a few different uh, ones of these motors. Here's the principle again. You can see as I turn that little one of uh, one revolution, it only turns the larger one uh, a fraction of a revolution. The string goes onto a take-up reel and then the power is from a Lego battery box which uses AAA batteries, six of them, and the motor is a Mindstorms 9-volt motor which connects on there and it's switchable turns on with the green button and you can switch it back and forth with the orange button. Now let me take you in time-lapse through the build. I'm basically building a set of four walls and that supports uh, the gears. And you can put the gears either inside the box frame or on the outside. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a large gear and a small gear on each axle. And then you work your way from the motor down to the take-up reel where you've wound the string. Might take a little experimentation to get just the right configuration for the box, but here's how this one worked out. And those little keepers uh, will keep the gears in relation to each other. Now as it starts up, I can test it and you can see it's letting out right now. And I can change the direction of the motor to make it raising or pulling. Let me finish with something for still photographers. This is a use of a radius dolly uh, or a circle dolly where the camera is used for still photos rather than video. So these are still photos made by moving the camera around the arc. Good. And since I stay center of frame all the time, I stay in pretty good focus, and even with a shoot. quarter second exposure. So everything in the lower right corner of this picture and the background is blurry because the camera's moving an arc of movement, but my face is in focus in the center. But that flying machine, that butterfly, stays more or less in focus because it's moving along with the camera. So this is just one other way you can use this device to experiment with photography and film. So if you enjoyed this, I got lots of other videos here, here, and here. And don't forget to subscribe and leave comments afterwards, questions, suggestions, and be sure to like the video. And thanks a lot for watching.